Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to Africa Digital Skills Conference um, 2022. My name is Erica Pia. I'll be taking you through this presentation. Um, I'm the director of Appear Information Technology Systems. Our presentation for today is um, starting an e-commerce business in the digital economy, which is under entrepreneurship. So um, I'll be taking you through all the steps involved in setting up business online and um, creating a sustainable business that works. So what does e-commerce mean? E-commerce literally mean um, electronic commerce, which stands for is, is electronic commerce, which includes online shopping. So it encompasses physical retail establishment that sell clothing and other tangible goods, as well as many kinds of services from cybersecurity to hotel reservation. So when you say e-commerce, it's basically um, services, uh, traditional bricks and mortar businesses, services that use online or the internet as a medium of um, exchanging, as a medium of services, payment, and then um, delivering services. Okay. Um, our, our modern in international economy cannot function without e-commerce. It has changed how we shop and conduct business over the last few decades. As we can all um, see and recognize that um, all the various businesses are now moving online and particularly due to the impact of the COVID-19, um, all businesses moved online some way, somehow, and then uh, it increased with the number of businesses who are now using online as a medium to conduct business. All right, so that is what e-commerce is about. And this is under entrepreneurship. You say entrepreneurship, what does it mean? It's basically the activity of setting up a business or businesses, taking on financial risk in the hope of making profit. So basically, um, an entrepreneur or someone sees or has an idea or sees a problem and then is willing to sacrifice his money um, to take on the solution to the problem um, in hope of gaining um, profits by providing services or solving uh, the problem. Uh, what you see, what characteristics should an entrepreneur have um, from the definition? So economic activity, economic activity simply means that you you are you are engaged in a business or whatever for profit. So you are selling something, whether it's a product or a service, in hope of um, getting profit or money. Innovation. An entrepreneur should be innovative because there are several um, challenges that will come up with in the business. And then um, we are hoping that the entrepreneur should be able to innovate whenever the need arises or whenever there is a challenge. Risk, the entrepreneur should, of course, take risk to, because there is usually a gray area and a problem that needs to be solved. It has, people have solved it before, or the entrepreneur decides to solve that particular problem in hope of making profit. Now the entrepreneur needs to risk his time, his resources, his capital, his money 
to find the solution to that particular problem. And then after selling or providing services, he or she makes profit. Now, the profit is the main goal of the entrepreneur. If you are selling, if you buy goods for, let's say, 500, you are hoping to sell it at an increased price so that um, when you deduct your cost, you, are, you, you make profit. Um, the last one is teamwork. Entrepreneurship is not one man work. It involves a lot and it requires teamwork from a group of people, okay? Usually we say the best teamwork and then the best product. These are the two things that are required, all right? It's not like a one person who knows everything and does everything, no. It must be teamwork. Now let's go to data. Um, if, if you want to go into any area, you will have to have a clear picture in your mind, what goes on, the data, what says what, okay? So this data is an overview of the internet use in Ghana here as a case study. Now, as at February, 2022, the there are 16.99 million internet users, as total internet users. The internet users as percentage of the total population is 53%. Okay, so that's a lot of people. Um, why do we need this data? This data will guide us as to whether setting up a business online or an e-commerce business is relevant, it's going to fetch its money. Before we should be able to set up a business online, we should be able to know the number of people who use internet. Okay. Um, we are using Ghana as a case study. So um, uh, in Ghana, for instance, so if you are wherever country you are in Africa, um, wherever you want to set up your business, you should be able to know the you should get data. This data is from datareportal.com. You should be able to get data from data of users, internet users in the, in the particular country, and then the percentage of the total population that are using internet. Then the year on year change in the number of internet users. So as time goes on, so 2020, 2021, 2022, that is. Um, the, the, num the numbers that keeps adding up, that is 2.1%, all right? Then the average daily time spent using mobile internet each by each internet user. So per day, if someone is using mobile internet in Ghana, we are saying that the person is using four hours, 34 minutes for mobiles only. This is quite a good number. This means that you can literally do business, um, um, promoting the business, talking about the business online to get customers. And that is the goal of uh, this presentation. Now, we are saying the percentage of students, of users accessing the internet via mobile phones, that is 91.9%. Um, this is a staggering number a very impressive number. And this tells us that um, if we start business online in Ghana, um, we are likely to be able to um, succeed. All right. And this is the internet users over time in Ghana um, from 2012 to 2022. So you can see that they uh, every year there is an increase. If you look at this, um, diagram, there is an increase every year, the per percentage of internet users in Ghana. And like I said, this is a good thing. 
Now, the use of financial services. Um, bef uh, before, the people were skeptical about um, using financial services online, using credit card or using mobile money to pay services online. Some said it was fraud. Um, some said they would, they would not agree to entering their credit card details online or mobile money, entering their prompt and all that. But we could see that over time, um, companies have improved upon the services of, of, of the financial services, the fintechs. And we are now able to trust and pay for services online in hope that our data is protected. All right, so the percentage of people who use banking investment website for or mobile app each month, that is 12.3%. That's the percentage of people who use, who perform uh, financial services online. The use of mobile payment service, all right, each month, that is 8.8%. And then cryptocurrency, 5.3%. This is a good number. And before we can also um, go into a business in Ghana, for instance, like I said earlier on, we need to know the data. So this is a data of um, overview of social media use in Ghana. So the number of social media users, that is 8.80 users million users of social media. That is a lot, a lot of numbers. If for instance, you are dealing in real estate, you are, um, you are selling cars, you are, you are selling products. These numbers should tell you that 8.8 .8 million. So you can literally stay in your office or from the comfort of your home, advertise your business to a lot of people, okay? And this is gives you an upper hand over traditional media, all right? Year on year change, um, the percentage increase per year is 7.3%. Then average daily time spent using social media is three hours, 58 minutes, okay? Um, the year-on-year -year change in time spent using social media is 26.6%. The average number of social platform used each month is 4.8. Okay, so the average number of social media platforms, so 4.8. And then social media's, media users versus total population, that is 27.4%. So 27.4% are uh, social media users. Okay, um, the age of social media users versus media versus population age, 18 plus, which is 40.6%. Social media users versus total internet users. So we are saying that 51.8% of the total user, internet users use social media. Okay, female, 40.2%. And then male is 59.8%, um, which is quite a good number. Okay, so financial inclusion factors. Why is it necessary? We are talking about financials. Why is it necessary? It is necessary because um, we are going to sell online. So we would need to know the number of people performing transactions online and whether the area is viable. Okay, so accounts and the account with financial institutions, we have 42.3%. And then 
from that, we have 38.4 percentage as female, and a male is 46.3%. Okay. And then under credit card ownership in Ghana, we have 5.8%. And then under that, we have female is 4.4% and a male is 7.2%. And then for debit card ownership, we have 18.6%. Under that, we have the female is 13.1% and then 24.1% it's male, okay? Um, let's move on. So let's look at the weekly online shopping activities from the data. So, Purchased a product or service online. We have 28.2% purchasing a product or service online from the total internet users. We have 11.8% ordering groceries via an online store. And then we have 10.2% who bought secondhand item via an online store. And then we have 16.6% who used online price comparison services. And then we have 8.9% who, who used buy now and pay serv later service. An overview of um, consumer goods e-commerce. The number of people purchasing consumer goods via the internet, that is 7.78 million. That's quite a number. So from the 7.78 million, we are sure that if we set up an e-commerce business online, we are definitely going to uh, make money. Okay. And then the total annual spend on online consumer goods, that is $3.98 billion. The total annual spend on online goods, consumer goods purchases, that's quite a number. So this, from this data, we can literally say that um, setting up business online, or taking your business online is the best you can do to your business, okay? Now let's move on. E-commerce, consumer goods categories. Um, electronics, the, the total um, year on year change um, is 1.36 billion spent on electronics. 1.22 billion spent on fashion and then billion dollars, and then $163 million spent on furniture, and then $336.1 million spent on toys, hobby, and the rest. And then personal and household care, $489.1 million, and then food, $316.8 million. This average per year. Beverages, $64.55 million. And then the physical media, we have $26.20 million. So from this data, we can say that electronics and fashion are the big business in the e-commerce space in Ghana. Okay. So you can go to data reportal wherever you are, um, you are from in, in Africa and then which country you, you can get, before you start the business, you will have to get data on a particular um, country you are doing the business and know the amount of money that is being spent per, amount of money that is being spent 
um, annually. So this is for Ghana. Okay, so you can go to data report tau and then get for any country. And then you, you will know you are rest assured that um, if you start a business, you're gonna make money. Now, uh, what are the requirements for startup founders? So if you are looking forward to start a business online, um, what, what and what do you need? Because the road, um, the road will be challenging. And what and what do you need to be able to maneuver your way through the challenges that you may face? You need tons of grit or perseverance. You need to persevere a lot. You need perseverance. You need to be humble. Humble to know when you are wrong and um, accept change. You need to be able to learn fast. It is very critical that you know how um, you learn fast. Learn or learn and relearn to be able to help you stay in the business. You need to have a thick skin. Why? Because you will get a lot of rejection. Okay. There are a lot of uh, rejections that you are going to face while trying to sell products to people. And you need to have a thick skin for that. Because rejection does not mean that they actually don't want the product. It may be that at the time they may not have money or they don't need their services at the time. So uh, uh, rejection shouldn't hurt you. Okay, you need to have a high risk tolerance because you're going to invest in areas where you're hiring professionals to do this and this and that in the hope of getting um, the money, but you need to ha have a high risk of tolerance and then high stress tolerance, especially when you are starting because you are going to do a lot of work yourself simply because you don't have all the money, you don't have all the money um, to be able to hire all the expertise that is required, okay? So for example, I started a business, I think in 2017, I was literally doing everything myself, including delivery. Okay, uh, and um, what, what, what this meant was that because I was starting the business afresh and there was no capital to employ a lot of professionals to do this and this and that, uh, I needed to take upon myself um, the, to learn several things and then do them. All right, so you, uh, in that respect, you'll be stressed a lot. So that's why you need to have high stress tolerance. You need to be a great team builder. Why? Because without a great team, your business is going to face challenges. A, the great team is very, very necessary in building a business. All right, you need to be consistent. You need to be consistent, all right? And then, um, so if you have an idea that you want to implement or start a business online, um, how do you, do you just go on to start a business or you need to um, check whether the idea works, all right? So for that, you have to validate the idea and ensure that the idea works before um, you can even take it public, all right? So you need to create a landing page, outline the problem you are solving, and then outline who your customer is, and then have a clear call to action and lead form. So all these things you are doing, you are talking to customers, you are listening to feedback, and then you implement the feedback. So all these things you are doing, 
is just um, trying to um, talk to customers or potential customers about the idea whether they are willing to buy this product and that. So you get feedback from them. And this will help you to um, refine your product or know whether this product is viable or this service is viable to sell online. Okay, because you can't just say that I have an idea and go ahead and implement the idea without having a feedback from one or two people or potential customers. It is. It will be a disaster to launch to invest into an idea without um, talking to potential customers, um, and then all of a sudden you launch the thing. And no one's want the service or the goods. You understand? Um, that will be loss of time, money, and resources. So. Um, for starting a business, you will need a business plan. A business plan is simply a document that defines in detail the company's objectives, how it plans to achieve its goals. Um, a business plan is just the plan for your business and how you intend to, um, so you define your goals clearly, all right? And your objectives. And then you outline how you intend to, you know, achieve your objectives. And that becomes your business plan. Um, you can't go into, you, ca you can't literally do anything without a plan. You can't start a business and then just starting a business for business sake without a plan. You need to have a plan. If this works, fine. If this doesn't work, you need to have plan B and all that. All right, setting the right price. You need to set the right price, especially in e-commerce where there are several competitors, okay? Um, setting high price meaning that means that you are, you are a new business and you are setting high price means that, um, okay, it depends on the value, but high price also means that your business will store. And low price means that um, could mean that your your value or service is low. Okay, so you need to have so in setting the right price, you need to talk to customers how much they are getting the goods or service from your competitors, and um, how much they are willing to pay for other services. For example, I started a business, the business I started in 2017, I was selling suits online, basically online. And the prices from the shops, because I was doing online, I take the goods from the wholesale and um, I just put a small profit margin for tax purposes and profit purposes, and then I sell. Um, in ensuring that a lot of people are able to buy the product, and then I'll, I'll literally buy the product, um, go and buy the product again. Um, and whilst doing the business, I came across people who thought that because of my price compared to um, the prices from the boutique, mine may clearly may not uh, be, be that quality, okay? They had doubts. And they, some of them I explained to them that no, their boutique, you are, if you are buying from a boutique, you are paying for the cost of their shop. They are paying for electricity, their AC, their lights. They, are, they, 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 they have a lot of cost to bear and they put all of this cost on you. But since I'm selling online, I, I don't need to put all of these costs because I don't bear the cost. 
but it was getting difficult getting some customers who felt that no, they they had to buy um, um, pricey items to feel good. Okay, so this was a strategy I developed. So instead of um, pricing the normal boutique price, I started doing promotion. So I will put the normal boutique price over there, then I will cr cross it. And I, I will say that I'm doing promotion for just 30 days. And then I'll put the price I want to put. And I was able to cover a lot of customers. Why? Because all the people who would have thought, no, this is not a quality product, just by looking at the price, will now see that no, the, the actual price is this. So that is the value. But it has been reduced because of one or two things. So uh, they feel that it's just a discount I'm giving them and that increased sales. So you need to be strategic in setting your price for your business, okay? Then you need to also have a financial model. The financial model is just a representation. So they're in numbers. So you are going to do a representation. So for example, you can forecast that if this product or service, if I sell 30 in a month, that means that I'm making this amount of money and then you can project for one year how much you're going to make, how much it will cost you to keep running the business so that you'll be more productive in the near future. Okay. So in, in setting up a business, you need to be focused on these areas. Sales. Um, sales is a very critical component of the business. Why? Because without sales, the business cannot go on. You cannot run a business without sales. All right? And marketing, you need to market your products or services. Um, gone were the days where the business will just, you just set up a shop or an office and then you'll be in an office hoping that people will pass by. It isn't that like that any longer. You need to do social media, a lot of social media, marketing, and then sell your product online. Product, you need to have a product or service. Okay, you need to have a product or service that you are selling. So this come, takes us back to the idea. It is that you are solving a, a problem with a product or service, or you want to um, use an existing product or service that is moving, okay? Then you also have to look at the business, the operation side of the business or the business operations, uh, which literally means that uh, where do you get your goods from? How the logistics involved, how much it will cost you to, to get a, the goods from the, the, your supplier or the service that you are trying to render to the customer, okay? So all that is operations. And then the support after product, um, providing value or the product or the service to the client or the customer, you will need to constantly provide support to the customer. Um, all these will be treated in detail in the next slides. You need to have a business strategy and you need to recruit the best team as well, okay? Um, simple sales process for startups. For startups, um, like I said, sales are very, very critical in starting a business. And 
you need to take your sales process seriously. So point one, discover pain points. Pain points are problems discovered by um, getting feedback from customers or clients, okay? What their problems are, all right? You need to listen more than you talk, okay? So that you can provide the actual solution to your customers' problems. You need to ask questions to confirm pain. And I said that pain is the problems your customers are facing. You need to suggest potential solutions, okay? You need to help more than you sell. You need to help your customers, okay? Sales are very, very critical in, in your business and you need to pay more attention to yourself. You need to get next steps on the call. So after making a call, what are the next steps? Okay, and then you need to ask your clients for their business, what they do, how you can help them, and what solution you can offer them. These are sales books that um, you need to read. Some of the sales books that you have to read in order to be equipped with the knowledge of sales for your business. So number one is to sell is human. Number two is sales acceleration formula. Number three is predictable revenue. And then number four is challenger sales. Number five is sell the way you buy. So you need to have these books and read them. So marketing books as well. Um, number one is play bigger. Number two is obviously awesome. Number three is tuned in. Number three, made to stick. Number four, made to stick. Number five, one page marketing plan. So these are books to help you with a requisite knowledge, okay, on sales and marketing for your business. Now with the support, there is this tool called Talk To. Talk To that you can implement in your website to offer support to um, clients. So when clients land on your website or your landing page, you, you can be able to offer direct support to your client. So Talk To is, is a very good um, tool to help you um, um, reach out to your and provide support to your customers. Um, going forward, I will be talking a lot about tools to help you in your business online. So I hope you note them down and then you can use them later on in your business. So providing support on your website and all that talk to. Okay, so for payment systems, for payment systems in Africa, um, two that I've used that are very good, Paystack and Flutterwave, um, subscription-based, whatever you are selling online, you can use Flutterwave or Paystack to accept payment. So what you can do is that you can go to Flutterwave or Paystack and register an account and then choose a business account. You will submit your business document and then um, they will create an account for you. And then you, from their portal, you can either integrate their system into your e-commerce system, which can be a website or what an app or whatever, and then um, uh, accept payment via mobile money, credit card, or you they can generate a page for you to share with your client for them to enter their payment details for payment to be sent to you. So note these two payment systems down. If you have any question, I will provide um, my email and my phone number 
to assist you in implementing the payment system in your business. Okay. Now the, the product. Um, whatever product or service you are offering um, is two ways. It can be a product to solve a particular problem, or it can be because you are in the business looking for money or economic benefit. You 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 can also look at trending products that are busily selling. Okay, so you can look at look out for products that are selling. How do you do that? Let me take you to Jumia page. So we are on Jumia. Jumia is an example of an e-commerce site in Africa. It's in Nigeria, Ghana, and several other countries where um, sellers list their items online. So as a business, this is one of the um, um, shopping uh, online systems you can use to sh um, showcase your business. So you, you can see that from here, they have top selling items, okay? So these top selling items, according to their data, are products that are selling fast. Okay, so bags for ladies, bags for ladies are selling fast. Shoes for men are selling fast. So these are products that you can, if you have no idea or you have no business in mind, this is a business you can venture using trending products that are selling, okay? That are selling. So you can take these products and then you can sell them or offer competitive prices. All right. The other thing you can also do is to look at categories. So you can go to electronics and then you use their filter. Okay. Okay. So if you look at, if you use the um, filter by popularity, popularity means one product that people are buying or people are talking about and all that, all these are sponsored that. So when we come here, we can see that in electronics, people are actually engaging in um, or buying TV a lot, okay? So you can look at the sales of televisions as well, all right? So electronics, okay? So these are some of the tricks you can use to identify which products you can sell to make money quick and fast, all right? So let's go to um, Tonaton is in also in several countries as well. So let's go to Tonaton and then let's see. Let's see Tonaton. So let's go to mobile phones. And then from their filter, you can see recommended Okay, and then you can see products that are readily, they used to have the number of views over here, but they've taken it off. Um, so we can, from here, we can see that charges and all that uh, products that are moving quick, okay. All right, so let's go back to our presentation. Let's go back to our presentation. So those are the trending products, how to find the trending products in major e-commerce sites so that you can quickly from their data know the products that people are ready to buy, okay? so that you can also um, um, deal in search products for profits. 
Now you can, these are e-commerce platforms that can help you to. Um, so when you start a business and you have your product, you can subscribe on Jumia and list your product. So what Jumia does is that Jumia will advertise your product on your platform and accept um, um, payments and orders from um, clients or customers. And they will send their dispatch riders to come and take the products from you. And then after taking the products from you, they, they send to the client for the payment to be sent to them, then they pay you. So Jumia actually takes a lot of these logistics issues from you. So it can help you to actually um, set up a, 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 a business faster. You will just go and look for the products and then Jumia will help you to, first of all, get clients, sell to them, take money from them, deliver to them, and then you will just receive your payment. And then Tonaton, Tonaton is, um, now Tonaton is owned by Gigi. So it's two, they offer two services. One is where you yourself will meet the buyer and then you sell to the buyer. Another one is where they will come and take the item from you and then send it to the buyer. Okay. And then you can also create a, an e-commerce website for yourself, for your company. And then you, you sell your goods, products or service. Okay. Let's look at some tools you need. Um, whilst running the business, you have to track your visitors so that you, you improve your conversion rate. So the number of people that visit your website, the number of um, um, conversion you are able to retain. So people that come to your website to come and look at your product, whether they buy or not, what, what happens? Would they come back the next time and all that? You must look at that critically in an e-commerce space. So you use this tool, Hotjar. You can implement hotjar.com to track every click, scroll, and movement of your visitors and create a heat map. So this tool is very critical because you need data in business. You can't just um, set up a website and then um, expecting that things will work. No, you will need to know what is going on. Who, which people are visiting your website from where? The data, what are they doing? At? What products are they looking at? What product are they clicking? So that you'll be able to offer the products they are interested in. You offer, you offer more of that product to them, okay? And then another tool is retention.com. Retention.com captures emails of people that visit your site, okay? So the moment they visit your site, the, the system captures their email for you so that you can email them at a later date. It's very, very important too. Another tool for um, finding uh, keywords. So you use ahrefs.com to find keywords with traffic that your competitors are using. Okay. So because you are going into an area, who and who are selling the same products or services like you? so that um, you can look at the keywords they are using and how they are generating traffic for their website. And then you can implement their keywords in your website as well. So what you can do here is that you can hire a good, um, you can hire good blog writers and then build more than 20 links, okay? So that you can get traffic. 
as a business owner, you will have to take social media seriously. And from the data I presented from the starting of this presentation, we know that the number of people accessing using social media per day, the hours and all that should tell you that you are supposed to constantly promote your business online using social media. Now you, in, in, in a way to convey your message to your people, you can de design infographs or graphics that can be shared by anyone. So you first of all, you share it on your social media pages, but it can also be shared by anyone. And one tool that can help you with graphics is canva.com. So you don't need to hire professional, um, you don't need to hire professional graphic designers. So canva.com helps you to save money. Okay. And use it to design graphics for your social media. And then simplified.com. Simplified is a very powerful tool. Why do I say so? Simplified.com helps you to design graphics. It helps you to write or copyright um, uh, uh, sentences about your services that you are rendering for social media or products for social media. Simplified also helps you to edit your videos. Okay, for commercial and for social media. And it helps you to publish content on your social media pages as, as well. Simplified is a great tool for your business. Okay, in terms of social media. Okay, so there's this tool as well. We are in all this presentation, I've been talking about data, 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 data. A business cannot thrive without data. A business cannot thrive without data. Okay, so the business owner must know, use data to his or her advantage. Now we have, we are, we are in an um, internet age where we use WhatsApp a lot. We have several groups that we are in. All these are potential customers. And how do we extract the data from all the numbers from their names and all that from our WhatsApp groups, store them so that we can message them and inform them about our products and services. You can extract your, your numbers from, social, uh, from your WhatsApp, all your numbers, using WA download phone numbers from Google Chrome. It's a, it's a Google Chrome extension, okay? So all you do is that you go to Google Chrome and then you go to extensions, download, search for WA download group phone numbers, and then you download the extension. And then you can go to web.whatsapp.com, which is a web version of your WhatsApp. And then um, from, from that, you can extract phone numbers and names of people, the groups that you are in, several groups and all that, from the, the data you can extract it. And that can become the basis of your business, that you can use that data to start selling or offer services to, to they can become your potential customers because these are people that are, you are in groups with across um, WhatsApp. Okay. Um, whilst using social media, you need to have a, whilst using um, social media as a business owner or setting up a business, you need to have a website. If you don't make use of a website, you can make use of to the tools I, I discussed earlier on the Jumia, the Tonaton, the Gigi, the ones that can help, help you to publish your product out there for people to actually come and see your products and services and then buy from you. And then 
You can also use WhatsApp business. It has some tools in it to help you to market um, with your business. And then social, you can also be using social media pages a lot. With the social media, I told you Simplified helps you to um, publish content on your social media using graphics, videos, and then content and all that. And then social media to publish your goods or services. You need to use Facebook. Facebook, you need to um, do Facebook promotion. You need to have, Instagram also has tools that can help you to um, promote your business, okay? And Instagram is built specifically for promoting businesses. So use Instagram for your business. And Instagram has some videos I want to share with you. Um, some ads that I saw that was very powerful ads because we, we have tested some ads that didn't work. But when I saw these ads, um, I recorded it so that I could share with you the way they created the ad and how the ad is going to generate um, a lot of sales. Okay, so quickly, I want to um, stop sharing and then share with you the video of um, the Instagram video that I saw. That caught my eye, okay? So let me share. So look at this ad. Okay, that I saw on Instagram to help with your business. So look at how they did the ad. So they sponsored this. And if there's no way you will not call these people, if you're having this problem in your house where your couch is very dirty and then you want, um, you want to be, so the, in this particular ad, they are showing you the problem, which is the dirty couch. And they are showing you the solution after the couch has been cleaned. This is very impactful, such that a lot of people who have this problem will immediately call to ask for prices, and then eventually this business will move. So if you have a business before and after of the service or the product you are, you are, you are, you are, you are rendering like this can be very, very key to you. So, this strategy is very, very good. Look at another one also that I saw. Um, this one. Here. So let's look at this one too. Let's look at this one too. So they are selling uh, suitcases and look at how they are advertising it. You see, they, okay. This ad strategy will work for your business. So day in, day out, people are coming up with um, ad strategy, how to market products. And these two that I saw caught my eye that I wanted to share with you, okay. So you can be implementing stuff like this. I don't know the products and services you intend to render or you are rendering. You can be implementing stuff like this in your business. Okay. And be sure that this strategy is going to help you to generate income. So bringing the presentation to an end, um, I will say that life is not more, more than just, life is about more than just business. So you have to make time for your family. You have to make time for your friends. 
and then you have to make time for your hobbies. A truly wealthy have the truly wealthy have a lot more than just money. Okay. Thank you so much for this presentation. And